All right, guys, exciting news. The ultimate pre-med and medical student research course is now live. We have a total of 12 sections, 10 core sections plus two bonus sections. Those first 11 are already up and live on the website right now. The 12th one we're currently editing. This research course is gonna be the most comprehensive and well-rounded resource in helping you elevate your own research game, which will help you get into either medical school or residency. Now, the three co-creators of the course, yours truly, also Dr. Sean Anderson and Dr. DePaul Patel, we each have over 60 research items, that's publications, abstracts, and presentations to our name. You can see my full list over at kevinjabal.com on the About page. And we each used different strategies, right? We have different strengths and weaknesses, and we combined all of that expertise into this single research course. You're going to learn what all three of us did in this distilled manner, and this is a sneak preview from one of the videos in the course. Enjoy. <laughs> Hey there, research rockstar. If you're patting yourself on the back for conquering the research world so far, well, go on ahead. You deserve it. You've breezed through eight modules like it's a walk in the park. Impressive? Absolutely. But hold your hypotheses. Are your PI and the research squad giving you a standing ovation, or are they politely golf clapping in the background? Sure, you can do research, but that isn't all this course is about. Being a research superstar is like being a unicorn rare and magical. Your PI won't praise you just because you know your way around a lab. You got to make them go, whoa, this student is on another level. So what's the secret sauce to transform from a good researcher to a research superstar? It's all about the extra mile, my friend. We're talking about moves that will make your PI and research team raise an eyebrow and go, this one's not just sipping coffee in their lab, they're brewing up success. Buckle up, buckaroo, because we're about to inject some pizzazz into your research game. Tip number one is to do as much work as you can up front. Okay, I know that sounds crazy, but bear with me for a second. Anyone can go and reach out to a PI, come up with a project idea, and work on it over the course of several meetings and many back and forth communications. But imagine this, you grind out a project to 90 to 95% completion, essentially a near ready product. It's written up with all the data analyzed and the discussion section completed. Your PI is gonna be absolutely stoked you have no idea how many rough drafts PIs have to read through and how many meetings they have to have with their students just to make small strides on a project. If you hand them over a near finished project, they will be way more motivated to work with you on getting it over the finish line. In fact, I have handed completed manuscripts to PIs who had no suggestions for edits and wanted to just send it for publication. It's a win-win for everyone, honestly. You get a project done and submitted sooner, and the PI gets another project towards their tenure. But now, there's the added benefit that the PI sees you as an absolute rock star. Not only might they hand you a bunch of their incomplete projects that have been collecting dust, but they're also more likely to trust you and any product you produce moving forward. I know what you're thinking. Kevin, how do I fully complete a project without ever even talking to a PI? Great question. Well, there's a couple different ways. Think back to section three, where we talked about the various types of research. A common approach we've actually done and see others do is conducting a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis compares multiple different papers on a topic and talks about the overall findings. So if you think about it, you really don't need to go and conduct any experiments or really discuss the project with anyone. You can essentially just come up with the idea for a paper and just go and do it. In fact, many meta-analyses follow a similar format, so you can find some for inspiration and follow the structure pretty closely. Say you choose to do a meta-analysis of the effects of COVID-19 on the emergency room wait times. Well, you can do this completely by yourself, write it all up, and then approach the EM program director, research director, or another EM faculty member and ask them if they would review it for you and be the PI. I promise they will be blown away and very agreeable. You can take this approach with other types of research as well. Did you see an interesting patient that the attending mentioned would make for a good case report? Well, write it up. You know the patient and we're there for their case. Or let's say you have access to a database such as CARES or the NACC. You have all that information and data at the palm of your hands. Go and use it for a paper. No experiments or anything needed. Now, in many cases, you may still need to establish a connection with a PI and meet to plan out the project, methods, and go through the process of obtaining IRB and running an experiment or survey. However, having the mindset of doing as much work as possible upfront and on your own will still overall impress your PI much more than if you ask for assistance every step of the way and drag out the project for a long time. 
Moving on, tip number two is to manage a lot of research for a lot of people. We talk a lot about starting research projects for yourself, but what if you came up with research projects for others? Well, this is actually something Sean and DePaul did a ton of at their institution. They realized early on how impractical it was to get a lot of research done all by themselves, especially while juggling clerkships and board exams, and wanted to extend research opportunities to others. So what they would do is come up with project ideas, create detailed and comprehensive project planners, gain approval from the PI, and then recruit one or two first and second year medical students to collaborate on the projects. They would put themselves in a third, fourth, or even fifth author position and serve as more of a guide and mentor to the project. It was a win-win situation. Underclassmen students could get on ready-to-go projects sooner with guidance, and Sean and DePaul could have multiple projects running at any given time. The part that impressed the PI was the fact that Sean and DePaul would handle all the small details, questions, and hiccups, which in turn reduced the time spent handholding. Sean and DePaul would meet with the PI every few weeks to discuss the progress of all ongoing projects, rather than the PI needing to meet with each individual group. It was more time efficient, and more projects got done as a result of this peer mentorship collective. So again, consider managing multiple projects while maintaining more of a supervising role, especially if you are in your third or fourth year of medical school, where you may have less time to spend physically conducting and writing up each project. Lastly, tip number three is to build good relationships with your team and other students. I know what you're thinking, isn't that obvious? Well, yes and no. You would be surprised the types of personalities medicine and research attracts. A lot of folks are used to being the smartest in their friend groups, top of their class, leaders of their projects, and so on. Sometimes they forget the importance of working as a team. Shifting your focus from yourself and your own success, and instead working towards the success of your entire team can really pay off in the long term. Be the person who is checking in with members of your team. See if they need help with anything. Offer advice. Get tasks done on time. Be reliable. Keep your PI and team constantly updated on your status rather than going MIA when you have exams or clinical duties keeping you away from finishing your project. In return, you will gain their trust and they will enjoy working with you. This can lead to you being included on future projects, a good letter of recommendation from the PI, and other benefits. Again, this tip may seem self-explanatory, but we have seen and worked with people who are hard to get along with and are unreliable. We've even seen our peers get dropped by a PI for being difficult to work with. Don't be that guy. No one likes a self-centered lone wolf gunner. Being a reliable and pleasant team player will always pay dividends. Now, these aren't all the possible ways you can impress your PI and team. In fact, attached to the material section of this course is a running list of the other ways you can be an invaluable member of your research group. Now go off and become the research superstar we know you are. All right, guys, that was a video from the Med School Insider's Ultimate Pre-Med and Medical Student Research Course. Now, it comes with a 10-day money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason after you purchase, you can get 100% of your money back within 10 days. And as a little thank you for watching this video, for the next 30 days, you can get 20% off the course by using the coupon code ADVANCE20. Link in the description or visit medschoolinsiders.com forward slash research course. And I'll see you there.